Hello, Recruit, and welcome to a National Academy Extra discussing platforms and storage options. Our discussion last week was more of an exercise in the theory and best practices of building your base. Today, we are going to spend our time together discussing the specifics of nearly every platform and storage item available in the research catalog. We will also spend time today discussing how selecting the proper platforms and storage can not only enhance productivity in your base, but also improve its aesthetics. I know this isn't the most exciting topic, so I'll try to throw in a poultry poker or something now and then just to spice things up. Let's get started. There are 17 different platforms you can create in three different size categories, so I am going to move through their details rather quickly. Some of this information may have been presented in earlier courses, but it's much simpler to cover it again today than refer you back to a handful of different courses that made brief mention of them. We will start with the Medium Platform A, the first of five Medium Platforms. The Medium Platform A is unlocked at the beginning of your adventure and is created on the small printer from one resin. It features four power cables and a single medium tier two attachment slot. You received two of these platforms as a reward for completing the resourcing mission. The Medium Platform B is unlocked on the research catalog with 250 bytes and is created on the small printer from two resin. It features four power cable plugs, two small tier one storage slot and one medium tier two storage slot. The medium platform C is a round platform that you can unlock in the research catalog with 400 bytes and create in the small printer from one resin. It features three power cable plugs and a single medium tier two storage slot. The medium T platform is unlocked with 400 bytes and is created on the small printer from two resin. It features three power cable plugs and the unique layout of two medium tier two storage slots with one on the main round portion of the platform and the second raised slightly and rotated 90 degrees. Finally, there is the tall platform, which can be unlocked in the research catalog with 750 bytes and is created on the small printer from one ceramic. It features three power cable plugs along with four small tier one storage slots and one medium tier two storage slot. It is no accident that it resembles a light pole. This storage was introduced to the training simulation around the same time as the floodlight. Moving on to the large platforms, we begin with the large platform A. It is unlocked at the beginning of your adventure and is created on the medium printer from two resin. It features four power cables and a single large tier three storage slot. Large platform B can be unlocked in the research catalog for 500 bytes, but you most likely unlocked it as a reward for completing the printing up mission, which also rewarded you with one of these platforms for free. It features four power cable plugs and two medium tier two slots and a single large tier three storage slot. The large platform C is unlocked in the research catalog with 1000 bytes and is created on the medium printer from one resin, one iron, and one ceramic. It features four power cables and 20 small tier one storage slots and one large tier three storage slot. It is the only platform available to feature this many storage slots in a vertical orientation. The large T platform is unlocked in the research catalog for 1000 bytes and is created on the medium printer from two aluminum and one resin. It features three power cables and two large tier three storage slots, one on the round main base and a second slightly elevated and rotated 90 degrees. The large curved platform is unlocked in the research catalog for 1000 bytes and is created on the medium printer from two ceramic and one compound. It is essentially a rounded version of the large platform A, featuring the same four power cable plugs and one large tier three storage slot. Rounding out the large platforms is the large extended platform, which is unlocked for 500 bytes and created on the medium printer from two resin. It is basically two medium platform C's connected by a long bar in the middle. Each end contains three power cable plugs and a medium tier two storage slot. You will receive this platform as a reward, along with its unlock schematic, when we complete the Arm Yourself mission in Astronaut Academy 303. That brings us to the extra large platforms, beginning with the extra large platform A. You can unlock this one in the research catalog with 2000 bytes, and it is created on a large printer from two iron and two ceramic. 
This octagonal platform features eight power cables and a single extra large tier four storage slot. The extra large platform B is unlocked in the research catalog for 3000 bytes and is created on the large printer from four iron. This two level platform features four power cable plugs and a total of 10 medium tier two storage slots with five on each level. This is also the only platform to feature angled storage slots. The truly massive extra large platform C is unlocked in the research catalog with 2000 bytes and is created on the large printer from two iron and two resin. It features four power cables and two large tier three storage slots on either end and one extra large tier four storage slot in the center. The extra large curved platform is unlocked with 2000 bytes and is created on the large printer from two ceramic and two compound. It features four power cables along with two large tier three storage slots to each end and a single medium tier two storage slot in the middle. The extra large extended platform is unlocked in the research catalog for only 750 bytes and is created on the large printer from three resin. It features four power cables and the main body includes a single large tier three storage slot with a medium tier two storage slot on each of its extended ends. Finally, the figurine platform is unlocked in the research catalog with 3000 bytes and is created on the large printer from one iron. It features four power cables and 64 small tier one storage slots. If you think this platform resembles a chess or checkerboard, that is no coincidence. We will discuss items that you can use with this platform in Astronaut Academy 305. Rounding out this discussion of platforms is a rather unique item that cannot be created or even moved once you discover it, the installed platform. This is where things can get a bit tricky for our discussion because the specialized missions relating to this platform will not become available in your mission log until after you complete a specific xenobiology related mission and we will not be discussing Xenobiology until Astroneer Academy 205. It is possible to skip this prerequisite mission if you know where to look. So head to the North Pole of Glacio and keep an eye out for this huge structure with a massive container attached to the center portion. It is typically located in plain sight, very near the gateway chamber, though some astroneers have reported that it is buried under the terrain of larger glaciers. There is another way to locate the platform using the helpful friend, and thankfully, we will be discussing that friend in just a few weeks. Once you do locate this installed platform, you will find data circuit model A, one of five, in the storage slot in one of the arms of the platform. Simply pick up that data circuit and the new mission, alert, new schematic available, will appear in your mission log. Make note of the locations in the details of this mission as these are the only locations where the installed platform will appear. You will also need to visit each location to collect their data circuits in order to unlock another item we will discuss later today. The installed platform is a massive structure featuring an extra large tier four storage slot in the middle and a large tier three storage slot on each of its arms. It also features six power cable plugs and even has a few ramps to help you walk up the side of it. As I mentioned earlier, however, you cannot create additional installed platforms to use in an existing base, nor is there any way to move an installed platform to integrate it into your base. If you wish to utilize an installed platform, you will need to build around it. This greatly diminishes the utility of what could otherwise be an incredibly useful platform, as I do not know many astroneers who would want to completely move their base just to take advantage of one platform type. Additionally, there are only typically five of these platforms in locations throughout the civil planetary system, so you cannot even take advantage of them on every planet. I sincerely hope Exodynamics will figure out a way to give us the option to create these platforms and allow us to place them wherever we desire. Okay, whew, that was a lot of information about very specific platform details. Now let's move on to some 
general characteristics that nearly all platforms share. Platforms can be attached to any terrain, meaning they can not only sit flat on the ground, but they can also be attached to walls and ceilings. To help you avoid picking up a platform by accident, they can be locked in place. Simply hover your simulation cursor over a platform and use the indicated control input to lock it. If you look closely at the legs of the platform, you will even see small red pins extending down into the terrain, providing a nice visual cue that the platform is locked. If you later wish to move a locked platform, you can once again interact with it to unlock it. The pins will retract and you will be able to pick up the platform again. As we discussed last week, it is possible to dislodge a locked platform if you manipulate the surrounding terrain. This will cause the platform to become unlocked and may even cause the platform to move. Platforms on walls or ceilings may even fall to the ground if you manipulate the terrain around them. I should point out that these characteristics are not present on the installed platforms. Since they cannot be moved, they do not need locking legs. I guess that might be rather convenient considering it doesn't actually have any legs and simply sits atop a large dark base. Most platforms also feature a small red arrow indicating which side is considered the front. If you place a module on a platform, it will typically orient its controls to face the same direction as that arrow. There are exceptions to this rule, especially when it comes to any modules you may have rotated around previously. You can safely ignore these arrows if you wish without fear of anything breaking. The arrows are simply there to help you understand what direction a module will typically orient when placed on the platform. Many astroneers can struggle with aligning platforms in relation to each other. To help you with that, here's a quick pro tip. You can place your printer on one end of the platform to which you wish to align other platforms, then print the next platform. When printed, the package platform will be perfectly aligned with the one holding the printer. Granted, this will only guarantee the same orientation angle if you're using platforms of different sizes, but it can help you get things perfectly aligned if you are placing several of the same platform in a row. Just pay attention to the direction the platform hologram on the printer is facing before you begin printing to confirm that you have correct alignment. Later today, in an Astroneer Academy Quick Bite, we'll show you another way you can use existing platforms to align other platforms before you even unpackage them. All of these platforms can be used to hold various power or production items, but they can also be used together with the various storage options to help you create a well-organized base. Storage comes in two types, utility items and tools with different sizes available in each of these types. So let's take a quick look at all 14 storage options, beginning with medium-sized utility items. Up first is the medium storage, which is unlocked at the beginning of your adventure and is created on the small printer from 2Resin. You received two of these as mission rewards, one from completing resourcing and one from completing smelteringly hot. The medium storage can be attached to any medium tier 2 or larger storage slot and can store 8 small tier 1 items. The medium storage can also toggle between two modes by hovering your simulation cursor over it to interact with it. Its default mode, collapsed, causes it to appear to have a base with an upright, two-sided upper portion. In expanded mode, the medium storage flattens into a single plane and, as its name would imply, somewhat expands the footprint of the medium storage. The medium storage silo is unlocked in the research catalog for 3000 bytes and is created on the small printer from 2 Titanium. You'll receive one of these as a mission reward in two weeks as we begin our discussion of xenobiology. The medium storage silo can be attached to any medium, tier 2 or larger storage slot and can store 24 small tier 1 items. It occupies the same physical footprint as a medium storage while offering 3 times as much storage space, making it a more efficient use of space than the medium storage. The tall storage is unlocked in the research catalog with 400 bytes and is created on the small printer from one ceramic. It can be attached to any medium, tier 2 or larger storage slot and can hold 3 small tier 1 items. 
One of its tier one slots is angled at 90 degrees to the main upright pole, while the other two face the opposite direction and are angled downward at 45 degrees. Once again, it's no coincidence that this resembles a light pole as it too was introduced around the same time as the floodlight. Next, we have several large storage options, beginning with the generically named large storage. You can unlock it in the research catalog for 2000 bytes and create it on the medium printer from 3 Ceramic. It can be attached to any large tier 3 or larger storage slot. It features four sets of medium tier 2 storage slots, two on each side of its wedge shape. Then there are the two large storage silos, both of which require a large tier 3 or larger storage slot. Silo A is unlocked for 5000 bytes and is created on the medium printer from two aluminum and one steel. It features a total of eight medium tier 2 storage slots with two pair of them on four of its six sides. The silo B is unlocked from the research catalog for 7,500 bytes and is created on the medium printer from 3 Steel. It features 12 medium tier 2 storage slots with three on four of its six sides. The large active storage does not feature any medium tier 2 storage slots. Instead, it features 15 small tier 1 storage slots. It is unlocked in the research catalog with 2000 bytes and created on the medium printer from one zinc, one aluminum, and one resin. Similar to the medium storage, you can interact with the large active storage to raise and lower it. That isn't all it can do, however. The base features what appears to be a single tier 1 slot, while the back side of the large storage panel itself has what appears to be 15 more tier 1 slots. Those are not storage slots, however. They are activation slots. While we will not be discussing automation for several more courses, it is worth mentioning that these small slots are intended for use in conjunction with various target pins from automation items. The one at the base can automate raising and lowering the storage itself, while the ones on the back of the panel allow for triggering items stored on the front of the panel. The final utility item is the extra large storage, which is unlocked with 2000 bytes and is created on the large printer from 2 iron and 2 ceramic. This unique dome shaped storage requires an extra large tier 4 storage slot and it can hold 31 small tier 1 items. It might not be the most efficient use of storage space, but it is definitely the most unique. Let's move on to tools, also known as canisters, beginning with the small canister, also known as the soil canister. You should be familiar with this one by now as you received it as a mission reward way back in Astronaut Academy 101 for completing the breathing space mission. It is unlocked at the beginning of your adventure and created on your backpack or small printer from one resin. It is a small tier one storage item that can only hold soil. If you need more information on the soil canister, then please, Go back to Ashton Academy 101 and start over because I don't think you have been paying attention. There are three medium canisters, beginning with the medium fluid and soil canister that we introduced in Ashton Academy 106. It is unlocked in the research catalog for 2,500 bytes and is created on the small printer from one plastic and one glass. It can be attached to a medium tier two or larger storage slot and it can hold the equivalent of 24 soil or hydrazine canisters, though it can only hold one of these resources at a time. It also has two different settings, input and output. On input, it will automatically pull any soil or hydrazine canisters and empty them into itself. In output, it does the opposite, pulling any empty soil canisters and filling them or creating and filling hydrazine canisters. The medium resource canister is unlocked in the research catalog for 2000 bytes and it is created on the small printer from one plastic and one glass. It can be attached to any medium tier 2 or larger storage slot and can hold 32 nuggets of a single resource. When empty, the canister displays its own research catalog icon on the side, but as soon as it holds at least one nugget of a resource, that icon changes to reflect the resource contained inside. If you completely empty a medium resource canister, the icon returns to the canister icon and it can then be used to store any resource again. It has a small window to either side to allow you to visually gauge how full the canister is with a ring near the top that will illuminate green when the canister is full. 
when it is full, you can store a 33rd resource nugget on its input slot on the top. You can interact with the medium resource canister to enable or disable output of the resources it contains. When output is enabled, the medium resource canister will dispense nuggets of the resources it contains via its output slot, which is located near the bottom of the front side of the canister. It will automatically fill any storage attached to the same platform or vehicle until that storage is full or the canister is completely empty. When in output mode, the medium resource canister can automatically supply resources to your production modules if the resource it contains is the same one that the production module requires. When output is disabled, the medium resource canister will automatically begin storing any nuggets of the resource it is currently holding that are attached to the same storage on the same platform or vehicle. If the canister was completely empty, the canister will automatically store the nearest resource nugget, then continue storing all nuggets of that same resource. And here's a little pro tip for quickly transferring resources from your backpack into a medium storage canister. If a resource canister already contains contains at least one nugget of a resource, a hologram of that resource appears on the input slot at the top of the canister. You can hover your simulation cursor over that hologram and then use the quick store method to quickly transfer resources from your backpack to that canister. If you need a refresher on using quick store, be sure to consult the Astropedia. There is an upcoming mission that requires you to print and fill a medium resource canister, but that mission will not become available until we complete the Arm Yourself mission in Astroneer Academy 303. We introduced the medium gas canister in Astroneer Academy 202, so feel free to review that course if you wish, but the medium gas canister functions the same way as the medium resource canister, only it holds atmospheric resources instead. If you did not unlock the medium gas canister in Astroneer Academy 202 when we completed the front and air mission, then you can unlock it in the research catalog for 4,000 bytes. You create it on a small printer from one silicone and one glass. The medium gas canister can be attached to any medium, tier two or larger storage slot, and it can hold 32 full small gas canisters or a total of 160 units of a single atmospheric resource. Moving up in size, there is the large resource canister. You will receive one of these as a mission reward in Astrid Academy 303, though you will have to unlock it in the research catalog with 5,000 bytes if you wish to create additional large resource canisters. You can create it on the medium printer from one glass, one titanium, and one nanocarbon alloy. It functions exactly the same as a medium resource canister, though it can hold 400 nuggets of a single resource. Since it is so big, it requires a large tier three or larger storage slot. Finally, there is the extra large resource canister, though this one cannot be unlocked with bytes in the research catalog. Instead, you must complete the special mission we discussed earlier, alert, new schematic available, by collecting all five data circuit model A variants from the locations mentioned in the mission requirements. Alternatively, if you have received these data circuits as incremental rewards from limited time events, you can simply pick up each one of them that you already have on hand to complete this mission. Regardless of how you complete the mission, head to your mission log to claim your reward of one exochip and unlock the schematic for the extra large resource canister. With this massive storage canister unlocked, you can now create them on the large printer from one diamond, two nanocarbon alloy, and one exochip. Of course, you can also take the ones you find on Glacio and Calador and use them as you wish. I'd suggest bringing along some Packager, as these canisters are too large to fit into a shuttle when unpacked. When they are unpacked, the extra large resource canister is, well, an extra large tier 4 item that can store a whopping 2,000 nuggets of a single resource. It functions exactly the same as the other two resource canisters, though its input slot is on one side instead of at the top. And here's a little bit of random trivia. Given how long it takes each resource nugget to be transferred into a canister, it will take over 30 minutes to completely fill one of these huge canisters. And that is assuming you already have 2,000 nuggets of the resource on hand. 
With all of that technical information out of the way, let's move on to some general characteristics shared across nearly all storage. Every single storage should be attached to a platform or a vehicle to secure them in place. This not only prevents you from knocking them about, which can sometimes result in sending them flying beyond the horizon, but it also ensures that they will not sink through the ground. Well, okay, I guess your rover might still be at risk of sinking to the ground, taking your storage with it, but it is far less likely than the storage itself randomly sinking. Additionally, smaller storage attached to larger storage will essentially become unified. By this, I mean any production modules attached to the same platform will interact with all of the smaller storage items as if they were a single storage. The exception to this are the storage canisters. If they already contain a resource, only that resource can be added to them until they are full. If all of the attached canisters are empty, however, they too will be treated as unified storage until a specific resource is stored. Before we wrap up today, I want to spend a moment discussing the hot swap capability of all storage slots. This is incredibly simple. You can quickly replace one item with another in a storage slot by holding the new item over the item currently slotted onto the storage. You will see a highlight appear around the item currently slotted. To hot swap the two, simply use the same input you would typically use to place an item onto storage. The items will swap places and you will now be holding the item that was previously slotted to the storage. This works with all tier size items that can attach to storage slots. You want to replace your smelter with a research chamber? Hot swap them. Want to replace all of your solar panels with small generators? Hot swap them. Or maybe you want to replace those medium storages with medium storage silos. Simply hot swap them. Hot swap is an incredibly useful but often overlooked feature of the training simulation. Now that we have gone through a fairly exhaustive discussion of each platform and storage option, what should you do with this information? That's a good question, Recruit, and the answer is simple. Keep it all in mind when you are designing your first base and while thinking about how you might expand in the future. Early in your adventure, a couple of large platform bees will serve you quite well. Once space travel enters the picture and you begin expanding your production area, don't be afraid to experiment with other platforms and storage options to find the combinations that suit your needs. Mix and match platforms of various shapes and sizes to prevent your base design from becoming too monotonous. Use the medium storage in both its collapsed and expanded modes to help keep things organized while also lending to the overall aesthetics of your base. While we will talk a bit more about base expansion next week, it is worth mentioning now that you can and should transition to more robust storage options once you are able to do so. Storage silos and resource canisters are a far more efficient way to not only store your items and resources, but they also aid in production quite a bit. That is not to say you should just discard all of your old storage, however. You can easily repurpose some of it for storage on vehicles or even move it to a new base. If you cannot find a use for older storage, however, then toss it in a shredder and turn it into scrap instead of letting it sit around as clutter. Today, you have learned the characteristics of nearly every platform and storage option available in the research catalog and explored how you can couple that knowledge with what you learned last week in our discussion on building your first base. Later today, you will learn how you can easily align platforms to each other to get a nice, crisp look for your base. And next week, we will discuss setting up your first off-planet base, establishing task-specific outposts, and even relocating your main base entirely. Until then, I'm Brandon, reminding you to keep looking to the stars.